Hi, my name's Jeff Hilland. Um, I'm here with another installment of uh, Redfish YouTube video series. This one is about advanced communication devices. Real quick, uh, the agenda is just an overview of what ACD is, and then we'll get into the resource overview and map and a bunch of examples of what uh, the resources can look like. So Redfish developed an advanced communication device model for the 2016.3 release. Um, it's continually maintained and updated, um, so um, it's possible that new features and functions and bug fixes have been added. But the initial support contained uh, modeling for Ethernet, NICs, and fiber channel HBAs, um, with the possibility of supporting things like RDMA and InfiniBand and other communication components in the future. The whole point for this was to take the Ethernet interface model, which was just a bare bones, LOM kind of NIC in the initial Redfish model and expand on it for all the other network kind of things. This isn't necessarily the fabric model, but it could be an association uh, uh, to a, a fabric endpoint. Um, so we added some classes for advanced communication devices, and specifically these were network interface and network interface collection, network adapter and network adapter collection, and then network port, port collection, and device function, and device function collection. So I'll get into what each of those are. So there's two, I'm going to call them bags of, of objects that really kind of hold the functions and ports. And one of those is network interface, and another one of those is network adapter. And the network interface is the system view of the adapter. That's one you see hanging off of computer system. And the network adapter is the physical view of the adapter. And that one's hanging off a chassis. The reason we have both of them, and they're very similar, is you might want to assign a network device function to one system and a different one to another. And so this helps in that uh, um, composition kind of model to take one network interface um, and assign network, network device functions in yet another network interface on a different computer system and, and have um, it have different network device functions. So the network interface is an object. Uh, there's a collection of network interfaces hanging off of a computer system, each with an instance of network interface. And um, that's what it's for. It's on the system side, and it points to all the network device functions and ports that are assigned to the system, whereas the actual physical view of the adapter that's in a chassis is the network adapter, and it contains all of the device functions, regardless of which systems they're assigned to, that are on that adapter, and it contains all the ports that are on that adapter. So it's really the controller that handles all of the multiple um, device functions that you can see. And each controller may contain a link to corresponding PCI device instances um, so that you know uh, the PCI device, whereas network interface probably has the uh, PCI functions. The other two objects that I talked about were network port and network device function. And network port really represents the actual physical port. It's often the physical port. It could be a logical or internal port. But that's the configuration and capabilities and link status and all that stuff you'd associate with, you know, a cable thing being plugged in, whether a physical actual cable is there or not. The network device function contains the behavior the Ethernet components, the HBA components, whatever that network adapter centric view of the function is, whatever function it's been assigned, um, that's where all the behavioral characteristics that are, let's just call it protocol dependent. Um, so, you know, if it's an HBA, it's got all the HBA properties. If it's a NIC, it's got all the Ethernet, you know, MAC and IP and all that kind of stuff associated with it. If it was an RDMA engine, it would have all the RDMA uh, uh, settings. And if it was an InfiniBand NIC, it would have all the um, um, a, uh, TCA functions and, and things like that in it. So, um, again, those are as of yet not in the model, but uh, um, they certainly can be added as soon as somebody requests it. A pictorial view of the model is on this slide. Um, up in the upper left-hand corner, you've got the collection of systems, and then there's a computer system. And on the right, you've got a chassis, and there's an individual chassis in the chassis collection. Um, the blue boxes are uh, collections. The white, uh, gray ones are actual instances. So, you know, a system usually is related to a chassis. We don't have that shown here, but um, a network interfaces, um, 
that's hanging off the system is kind of that bag, that collection of network interfaces. It's a logical view of the network adapter. And the system can only see the network device functions and network ports that have been assigned to that particular network interface. There is a pointer to the network adapter um, so that you can see which one in the computer uh, is actually part of the chassis from that computer system. Now, each network interface and each network adapter has its own collection of network device functions and network ports, but the instances of those network device functions are the same. So the network device functions on the adapter is going to have all of the network device functions for that adapter, whereas the network device function collection on the network interfaces for the computer system will only have the network device functions that have been assigned to that computer system. So it may be that you've got to pre-configure it or reboot the system, and all of that is 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 uh, independent um, uh, of implementation. But um, once everything is set up, you can assign them uh, to the individual computer systems, and that's how um, um, that particular uh, uh, allocation to computer systems is handled. Network ports similarly are assigned to not only computer systems but to the network device functions. So assigning the net, uh, them to the network device functions lets you know what I/O traffic goes out what port. Um, and so if that port is associated with a fabric or a switch or something like that, then you can figure out which network it's on and all that. So that's kind of the fundamental uh, uh, part of the model. Um, but really the important point is the set of network ports and network device functions referenced by the collections on the network adapter may not be the same set as the network interface. If you've got more than one network adapter, um, obviously you can have more than one network interface associated with multiple computer systems. But a single network adapter on the chassis side could have multiple network interfaces on the system side in a composable model. In a single system model, it wouldn't. It would be one-to-one. -one. And so the network device functions and network ports would be the same on both systems. But because we needed to support the composition model, where you've got a chassis full of network device functions sitting there assignable to any computer system, um, we created both network interfaces and network adapters. And this is just with the PCI devices and PCI functions shown on there. Network adapters relate to PCI devices and, and network device functions relate to PCI functions. So here's an example of a network interface. Uh, this is the one in the computer system. It's got the same properties up top, you know, the at OData type and ID and OData ID and uh, the name. This is a network device view. It's got a collection of network ports and it's got a collection of network device functions. And the network device functions um, are the network functions that are assigned to this particular system. And it's got a link to the chassis network adapter. It also has links to the network ports. And, and by posting one of those network ports to this computer system is, is one way of assigning a port. Uh, oh, sorry, you'd want to assign it to the network device function and it would show up in this collection. And, and we'll show you where that is in a minute. The network adapter in the chassis is a little bit more complicated. It's got the network device functions collection as well, but it's got a controller's object, and it's going to show you the firmware version as well as the links to the PCI uh, devices, which are also in the chassis, and the network ports and the network device functions that are uh, uh, um, here as well. And then um, there's also uh, the network uh, ports up at the top, which are the chassis network ports. Um, you also have a capability structure inside the chassis network adapter. And this tells you, look, you know, I may support to this particular example, I've got a network port count of two and a network device function count of eight. I can technically do eight network device functions, but each one of these functions are going to chew up a certain number of my uh, uh, resources, and so you may not actually be able to create all network, all, all eight network device functions, right? So my virtual function, I've got a device max count of, you know, if I'm doing virtualization offload of 256, there's a virtual function information in there and group size. There's SRIOV in there. There's the endpoint ID for virtual NPIV, um, and there's a reset action in there as well. But just to let you know, the resource counts are all in the network adapter structure. Um, so that you can tell how much of what each of the network's device functions are going to consume as you go through and configure them one by one.
um, and there's that that uh, no, uh, physical port count and physical function count max. Um, here's a network device function in a chassis. Um, notice this one's referenced by the system, but this one's in the chassis and in the system. It's the exact same object, so both collections are going to point to the same one. It's only going to have one URI, and that URI is going to be in the chassis, as you can see in the by the OData ID up front. This one is kind of um, got some properties snipped in it, but you can see right now that it's you know this one is an Ethernet uh, 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 has the Ethernet chunk of the model, and if this was like this one has net dev funk type of Ethernet, you would only fill out the Ethernet portions. The, I, the, the fiber channel ones and the iSCSI boot ones wouldn't make any sense, even though they may be there, because the system's never going to use them. It's only going to use the Ethernet properties. If it was iSCSI boot, the iSCSI boot properties would matter, and if it was a fiber channel adapter, the fiber channel properties would matter. So we've taken one class and used it for now three different ways and in the future even more ways so that depending on the net dev funk type the network de uh, uh, device function type you know what you've got this set as um, that's which object you're going to use inside of this resource um, at the bottom you've got the assignable physical ports and then um, you see assigned physical port, physical port assignment. And, and adding that physical port assignment is how you um, actually add physical ports to this particular network device function um, or changing that property. Um, and then current function type is, and it's enabled, and function capabilities. You know, it's a good, a good idea to set all your properties before you enable the device. Um, your mileage may vary by, uh, by vendor. The network port uh, is also in the chassis, and it's referenced by a system. So again, same object, referenced by two different collections. Um, it's one of the few places in the model where we do that. Um, but in this one, you've got a little bit of information on the port. You know, how much bandwidth am I allocating per network device function? So we've got a capabilities object here that's showing net dev funk. Minimum bandwidth allocation is 25, and the maximum it can um, handle is 100. and because that's an array, each object has the URI of the network device function. Um, in this case, it's NDF1 that's getting 25%, and NDF1111111111100 that's getting uh, 100%. So um, that's that's a way of allocating the bandwidth between the network device functions that are assigned to the port. And then you've also got all the information on the current port, its connectivity and low-level protocol specifics. You know, what's my link status? Um, what are all the link capabilities I can handle? Um, I got a link, link network technology is Ethernet. Link speed is uh, 10,000. Uh, active link technology is Ethernet. That what, that's what plugged in. I support Wake on LAN, LLDB, LLDP, PoE, and, and EE. So um, all of that information is, well, is there as well. The majority of implementations are expected to have the network device functions initially unassigned and unconfigured, but all pre-allocated. Most collections, you can go in there and, and do a post to a collection and create it. The device vendors are going to let you know, you know, I've got eight network device functions, and they're all pre-populated, un unconfigured, and unassigned. And that's just simple because that means they don't have to support the post operation. It just makes it simpler for them to, to require you to go in there and patch things to configure it. So if a hardware supports X number of functions, the majority of implementations, those functions are all going to be there. So, and they're unconfigured in the initial state so that everybody can handle it the same way out of the box. So the physical hardware is going to have different capabilities that limit the combination of network device functions, as I talked about earlier. You know, if an adapter has one FC logic block per port, you know, you might, it may say you can handle eight, but you can really only handle one per port. So even though, you know, you, you might try and do two and assign them to the same port, it's not going to let you. So there are certain affinities that are built into the hardware. And the Redfish model doesn't currently expose those affinities. If you want them exposed, go to the Redfish forum and ask us to. If you want to see uh, things like InfiniBand and other other uh, topologies and other media types supported, go to the uh, external Redfish forum through the developer hub at uh, redfish.dmtf.org and, and put in a request and ask us what you want. 
Um, we're more than happy to add the uh, features and functions. We're looking for people uh, uh, to request it. So thank you for watching this uh, video on the advanced communication device uh, model in Redfish. For more information on Redfish, see the Redfish Standards page, the Redfish Developers Hub, or go, or go to the Redfish Forum. That's the work group that defines Redfish at the URIs that are um, uh, shown there on your screen. Thanks again.